Well, hi again, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of Inside Furman Athletics. I am Dan Scott, the voice of the Paladins. Good to have you with us as we continue our tour throughout the Furman University Athletic Department, catching you up uh, on everything that's going on with as many programs as we can one week at a time. This week, we are very pleased to have with us Michelle Young, who is the head volleyball coach here at Furman, coming off of a uh, Southern Conference opening uh, win, a match over Wofford. And the next three matches this team plays will all be in conference, and they'll all be here on campus at Alley Gym. How you doing? Doing great. As, as I said when we got ready to do this, it's always good to beat Wofford in anything, but your response was... It's always good to win. Just good to <laughs> win. The, the bottom line is always the bottom line, right. isn't it? Yeah, for sure. So how are you? Doing great. Um, you know, everybody's doing well, family's well, and season's uh, been been a good one. We're happy with the girls, and, and I think we have, you know, improvements we can make, and they're in sight. So, um, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a good season so far. And correct me if I'm wrong, but as I talk to coaches all over this campus, maybe the, the best thing is it's been – maybe not a fully normal season, but more of a normal season yeah. than what we went through a year ago? It is a little more normal, for sure. Uh, it's great. We've got fans back in Alley, which has been way better. Um, than, and um, in the beginning, it did start off where it was a little bit, you know, I think everybody's like, yes, it's going to be a normal year. And then we quickly found out we were not fully back to normal. Um, you know, there were s teams that were missing matches or trying to pick up matches. We were getting emails from teams that maybe were supposed to go play someone nearby. That fell through. You know, that's not normal. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, you know, you quickly got a reality check that, you know, we're closer, but we're not there. I think for our girls, you know, we are trying to make it as normal as possible. They're still masking up on buses. They're still, you know, when we're going to places – um, restaurants are still a little under, you know, it's, it's, it can get a little dicey feeding mm -hmm. your team. So, you know, all of that kind of stuff does remind you we're not there yet. But when we are at home and we're playing in front of our fans, oh man, that's a Bush League move there. Uh, Sorry about listen, that. Listen, I just remember to turn <laughs> mine off, so don't worry <laughs> I about apologize. it. I apologize. And so, um, you know, we are just, um, trying to make it as normal as possible uh, when we are playing at home, and mm -hmm. I, I think the girls have noticed that, which is great. Well, and the, the reality of the situation is that you have a freshman group that is getting integrated for the first time, but you also have a sophomore group who last year did not go through the normal freshman yeah. experience of, of being on campus and playing in the fall and, and everything that goes through that. So you really got two groups of – of young ladies who are going through this for the first time. Yeah, and that's most of our team. So, and then we had a junior, one of our junior captains, uh, Andreas Veda, said, she's like, Coach, we haven't even had a normal year. She's like, it happened in our freshman spring is when we went into quarantine. So, you know, we have 14 kids. 13 of them have never had a full normal year at Furman. We only have one senior in Nisi Harris, and she's the only one who's had a traditional experience. So it is kind of wild. I, I tell people I just want to get back to my normal level of abnormality. <laughs> and if we <laughs> yeah. can do that, I'll be happy, right? Right, right, yes. Uh, so let, let, let's talk about this team. You referenced you've got a very, very young team. Uh, you, you've been here for a while, 22nd season, I think. Now, H have you – how long has it been since you've had a team with this kind of dynamic to it? Um, I don't, you know, I'm not really, I know we've had young teams in the past. I think it's just that, you know, and we probably, if you look back, have had one senior. But I think it's just the combination of, um, you know, not having a, a, some consistency and experience at the upperclassmen level. Mm -hmm. But I think it makes it fun. I mean, you every year's different. Um you never know what you're going to be dealing with. You can end up being young because of injury. You know, you can end up um, just maybe you missed on a kid or something like that, so your class isn't quite as big. But I think it every year is different. This is just a new challenge. But I think when you're young, uh, it can bring some headaches. But it's usually a fun experience trying to get all those younger kids organized. And I think just we have a, a great group that is fun to coach, and they love to compete. So that, that makes things better. <laughs> And, and with with these freshmen, going back to that for a moment, the ones that are on campus now, the the, the one of the many unique aspects and challenges uh, of COVID last year 
was that you had to recruit these kids. You couldn't go see them, and they couldn't come to campus. Right. Yeah, that made it very unique. And even when they lifted the dead period, you know, I think it was probably a year and a half since we had actually seen a kid play in person. Uh, and we really didn't want to be offering kids off of video. I mean, video is just so different, and we were really trying to be patient. And, um, yeah, and, and, and then even the kids that are here, you know, they, ha they just don't have that normal flow of, okay, we take a visit, we're really familiar. Um, you know, Bella Talone had to decide sight unseen. I think she drove by campus, <laughs> you know, and that was about it. And so there were a few that that was the case, and then there are a few sophomores that that was the case. Mm -hmm. And so it is interesting. It's very different for them. I kind of like it. It kind of feels like way back in the day when you didn't have social media, you didn't even know who you were kind of showing up with, and it was all new in preseason and made for a good, you know, kind of gets them a little uncomfortable and they have to work through that. So it's a good thing. You, you don't want to offer kids based on a film, but I bet you got a lot better at film study. <laughs> yeah, whether you like it or not. We were yeah. watching, yeah, tournaments on, you know, it was just <laughs> not ideal. No right. one was loving it. It was nice that you could maybe be in your living room doing recruiting, but you're still watching film. It's just not the same. Yeah, you're trying to do it. Your husband is trying to do what he does for, you, for yeah. those who don't know. Husband Will Young coaches high school football here at Greer, so you've got that whole dynamic. Do you guys get tired of seeing each other? Well, we don't see each other in the fall, so I guess we can't get tired of not. You know, but, but during like, COVID, when you were kind oh, of no, it was great. I think we were kind of like oh, you know, because our kids, we weren't running kids to practice. We weren't, you know, we were all home and we didn't have anywhere to be. I think it was the that we no one had anywhere to be so there was no you know fear of missing out or anything going on uh, there's no we actually it was great we uh, really got some good rest yeah. and some some time together it's kind of like my wife and i was you know one day it was almost like hey i remember you yeah <laughs> we do get along still it's okay. yeah, exactly yeah, imagine sure. that but you're kind of back at it now everybody's yep. doing their own thing and you're off to a six and five start uh, but the big one, obviously, was beginning conference play, and that was a road win yeah. uh, at Wofford. You won three matches to two. Your 375th career victory. Oh, really? Yeah, that's, that's what Wesley wow. Herring tells me. Well, Wes would know. I would yeah. not know. Wes would know, so that's that's. You, you, don't, have, you don't have the little, little chalkboard at home? <laughs> no. But, well, that's good. <laughs> that's good. Uh, tell me about that match because that's uh, it's a, you know, obviously a great way to get the conference play off and to win on the road and, and to beat one of your big rivals. Yeah. Um, well, we, you know, we felt good going into it just because I think the girls had had a challenging preseason, um, where we saw a lot of good volleyball. So we felt prepared going into conference, going to Wofford's always, you know, a challenge because it, it is close, you know, it's, it's not, the travel's not too far, so it is nice. Um, but Wofford's always tough. Um, and it's always tough to play there. Um, just cause we knew it'd be their, their home opener for conference. Uh, they're going to be pretty fired up. And I think that, um, we did a really good job of battling, and I think we showed our um, ability to compete in big situations where we were able to, you know, kind of come back. They left the door open a little bit, and we were able to get in there and, and push it to five and um, and then really dominated mm. in the fifth. I was really proud of our girls at how confident they came out in the fifth. Yeah, and the, 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 the spring wasn't exactly what you'd hoped for having to play in that season and mm. everything that went into that. W what potentially could this win mean for this young team moving forward? I mean, I think it's just a confidence builder mm -hmm. for them. And, you know, they're interested to see, you know, I think we were picked maybe sixth or something, you know, nothing to get too excited about. Uh, and so I think they want to, you know, prove that they're better than that. And they want to um, – they're learning how to compete and win together. Uh, and so doing it on the road and then doing it in a – you know, kind of got a little sticky situations over there, and mm. they were able to come out with a win. I think it was a huge confidence builder, but, you know, that's done. We've got to move on and, and hopefully take what we can into the next weekend. You know, this obviously isn't your first rodeo, but when you see your team pick six, do you get a little extra motivated, and do you kind of pass that along to the kids, or do you just kind of keep, you know, let's not worry about that, and let's go uh, yeah. on about our, th our business? I don't really put too much stock in it. I think, you know, yeah. it always you, fuels the, the, you. The, the media, you probably shouldn't. You know, yeah. well, I mean, I just <laughs> preseason pull and preseason nobody's done anything yet right. and, you know a lot of things happen in the offseason recruiting um, training you know injuries coming back from injuries I just think you know it's not really based on a lot of facts so we don't put too much stock in it but it always motivates you to you know try to do that um, you know exceed the expectation and all of that um, but yeah our, our mo nothing changed we didn't talk about it at practice but you know they know and you know they see that kind of stuff and I think they're 
they're high achievers. They're competitive, you know, enough that they're going to want to prove everybody wrong. But we have to work hard every day to be able to do that. We can't just get mad about it and think we're going to do it. So um, really working to get them to understand how hard we have to work day in and day out to achieve those goals has really been the focus. Michelle Young is our guest on this week's episode of Inside Furman Athletics in her 22nd season leading the Furman Volleyball, volleyball Program, five-time SOCON Coach of the Year, and has led this program to two NCAA tournament appearances in 2008 and 2015. Six and five on the season right now, one and oh in Southern Conference play with three huge conference matches coming up in a row at home, which we'll talk about here in just a bit. Let's talk a little bit about some of the players on your team. Uh, with, with not much to, to choose from as far as experience, who are you relying on for your leadership? Uh, well, we have, you know, Nisi Harris is our one senior. She's our, our one, you know, player currently on the roster that's kind of an all-conference player. She's been two-time first-teamer. She's a preseason um, pick. She does a lot for us in the middle, does great things, and is a, you know, great competitor. Um, and then we have um, Andrea Veda, who has uh, been our libero for the last two years. Uh, she brings a lot of experience only being a junior. Um, you know, she started in that role since she got here uh, and has done some great things. So she's doing a great job. Uh, we have two setters coming in that are running the 6-2. They did not run it last year, but Ella Abraham is a uh, sophomore. Sarah Turner, who actually was a defensive specialist for us last year, um, but is a, is a setter and has done a great job getting ready because we, we kind of warned her she'd be stepping into that role a bit. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what she is. She is a setter, but she's great defensively. And, uh, again, just a, a great knowledge of the game, great player, and is so versatile. So her and Ella have done a good job this preseason of running the offense. Uh, and then we have so much depth in our pin hitters. Uh, they're all young, but they all do um, some really good things, and they're kind of interchangeable. Um, so we're excited. Our freshman, Bella Talone, has done a great job outside for us. Um, and Maya Maroos has become very consistent for us, doing great things with um, her defense, her serving and passing, and is um, getting more and more um, – success in the front row for us consistently and so you know we're really excited we've got um lots of players that can help us do the things we want to do and, and leadership can come really from anywhere can it yeah and we have three our three captains this year Nisi harris uh ace veda who's and and sarah turner who all have different personalities they all play different positions they all uh, approach the game a little bit differently and so i think it just is good to have that you know um just different Players, players respond to different players, and so I think we have a good balance there, and, I, and they're all players that have had to carry a big role, so I think that's a, a good for our team. How has the, the sport of college volleyball changed since you took this job? <laughs> um, the rules have changed. You know, the scoring has changed. A lot has changed. I think we've kind of landed on something here for a long stretch mm -hmm. of time. Um, I think, you know, the players are becoming very, very dynamic. They're, they're bigger, you know, they just keep getting bigger. Um, but I think, you know, kids are specializing a little bit more, so maybe they're not as well-rounded as an athlete. Uh, they're just very volleyball dominant and those mm -hmm. kind of things. So, um, but I, you know, it's just become more physical and the people are playing higher, they're playing faster. So you really have to be able to keep up with the, you know, just the level of physicality, not just the skill and those kind of things. That, that's, and that seems to be kind of universal across all of college yeah. sports uh, as, as generations turn over, the athletes get bigger, they get faster, they get yeah. stronger. How does that then change the style of play for you know not yeah. not the rules throw that out for right, a minute right. but the style of play I think it's just you know you have like at a at a Furman you know you're having to kind of find that balance of okay now is this player am I giving up athleticism for size am I giving or vice versa mm -hmm. you know is this player skilled enough to play at the size they are uh, and kind of picking and choosing I have a lot of colleagues that are like nope we we're going for this size we don't want any but we don't we don't care how <laughs> athletic or how well they play they have to be this size. You know, I think that happens with football, with linemen, and, you know, no, they have to be this tall. Um, and so I think for us, just finding that balance where we can be successful, um, you know, okay, how we, we really want someone who is athletic and can move quickly and can do a lot of work for us. Um, you know, they don't have to be this size necessarily, 
But we are trying to keep up, and we have to get some. We have to be able to find bigger players to keep up. But we really want them to not just be big and a project. You can't just have a team of projects either. Mm -hmm. So finding that balance, I think that's what a lot of coaches are trying to do. But it is a battle to keep up, and it gets harder and harder every year to get, um, you know, the size player that actually can do what you need to do athletically as well. I, I think of a basketball analogy. I, I think every college coach in America, or at least most of them, would love to have what Dick Vitale calls the aircraft carrier, the, <laughs> the seven-footer in the yeah. middle who can, who can change the game. But if he's just seven foot yeah. and, and doesn't have the the skill set, the athleticism, the ability to run the floor and do those things that fit inside the framework of whatever the offense is, it doesn't really do you any good just to be seven feet tall. Yeah, and that's the thing is with kids are you know they're all getting bigger that you know you just you're seeing so many you know used to be if you were over six one or six two you were huge. You know, and now, I mean, there are six, four, six, five girls all over the place. And they're, you know, they're on mid-majors. They're not just on the big, big teams. And so I think, it, and it's your style too. Like with basketball, what offense are we running? What do we want our kids to look like? You know, they have to be able to move this well. Because again, if you do have that seven footer just standing there, sometimes they're getting in the way. Right. Um, and so it's just, everyone has to kind of find what they need and, and go out there and make your moves and do those kind of things. But I just think it, the players, there are more bigger players out there in all sports, female, male, whatever. It's just a lot of big players to pick from. You mentioned something a moment ago that I want to circle back to when you, you talked about some players are specializing and they're not well-rounded athletes altogether. And different coaches have different philosophies about this. When, when you go out to recruit a player, are you looking for someone who has specialized in your sport or do you want somebody who's a more well-rounded athlete who's experienced other sports uh, over the course of their high school career? Well, I mean, I think it's a balanced thing again. You know, we're not, we're not like turning away anyone either way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think it's, it's harder and harder to be a multi-sport athlete these days. It's just kind of a, it's a real hard thing to pull off. Not because you're not skilled enough, it's just you don't have enough time in the day kind of thing. And so we, we would love to get some. I think uh, multi-sporters, they're hard to find. Um, uh, I think they do, they're healthy, they've had some more variety, um, but also there are kids that love it and have specialized and take really good care of themselves, and they do great as well. There's no perfect formula. Mm -hmm. I think we're pretty open, though, to finding that right fit or finding that kid that maybe has some untapped potential or can still has some room to grow, um, but then you also have to have those kids that, hey, they have competed at the highest level all the time and they have that experience and they can bring that experience and that transition into college isn't that big of a step and they can contribute immediately. I think, just think it is finding the, the balance and putting your roster, roster together that's going to allow you for the most success. Both You, ne you need some you can count on mm -hmm. as much as possible, and then you need some that are going to grow and continue to get better as well. So basically it, <laughs> it's whatever's going to make the program better. That's, gotta, that's who you're going after. you got to put the puzzle together, yeah, yeah right. and you got to have the players to do it. So. And then the other piece of this, uh, obviously, is not only do they have to be a great – athletic fit but at Furman they have to be a great academic fit which I know shrinks the pool of available <laughs> athletes that you can go out and recruit yeah it does it brings challenges but I think I'm in a sport that there are a lot of very talented players that are also talented in many areas mm -hmm. and they fit Furman very well and so that's you know something that you know I think is allowed not allowed, but, you know, it's been encouraging being at a firm in this long. Obviously, there is a formula that can work. Um, if I was in a sport where maybe I can't get the players I need because of the academic rigor, then maybe I'm not at a school that long. But mm -hmm. I think that, you know, with volleyball, we can – a lot of our top players are looking for a good academic fit, and they want the best of both worlds. And so that's where we can come in and, and provide that for them. Michelle Young with us on this week's edition of Inside Furman Athletics. Mentioned that Furman Volleyball 6-5 and five on the season so far. Non-conference wins over North Alabama, UNC Wilmington, Presbyterian, Jacksonville, and Long Island. And, of course, as we mentioned, opened up the conference season with the 3-2 uh, to two win over Wofford in Spartanburg. So as we kind of get ready to land a plane here, we mentioned that your, your next three matches in conference play are all at home at Alley Gym, and it starts this weekend uh, hosting Chattanooga and ETSU. Yep. 
So we've got our hands full again. Um, you know, I think just the conference is going to be – everybody's pretty consistent right now where they've had some solid off-season play. And, um, you know, Chattanooga, ETSU are always going to be challenging. I think for us, we're just trying to work through our own stuff and get more experience, figuring out, you know, how to win consistently, um, how to make plays – over and over and over, so now we're putting we're not putting ourselves in a tight situation and late in a, late in a set, or having to go to five like we did at Wofford, you know. So I think both teams will bring a challenge, but we'll be glad to be at home, and we look forward to the challenge. So preseason polls being what they are, yeah. as you mentioned a moment ago, mm -hmm. who was the preseason number one in this conference? Who, who's the team everybody is is supposed to be shooting for? Uh, Samford, I think, was number one, mm -hmm. and honestly, I can't remember the rest of the order because I said. <laughs> I don't pay too much attention right. to it, and I really don't care. I want to just focus on what we're doing. Traditionally, though, I mean, they're they're, a, they're a they've had some um, they've had some good years. Uh, they have won in the past here. They're doing some good things over there. Mm -hmm. um, they got one of their top players to return for her fifth season. She's using her COVID year, so um, yeah, I think it's going to be another challenging year. You like the competition level in this conference? I do. Uh, it's been interesting with all the conference changes. I feel like we've kind of finally, you know, been consistent mm -hmm. um, with this group that we have now. Uh, and I think it's kind of evenly spaced out this year. It could be anybody's. It seems like there's a lot of, in, in coaching, there, there's a lot of uh, the, the, the old serenity prayer. <laughs> you know, yeah, you, for you, sure. God, give me the, the, the <laughs> wisdom to control the things I can, to know what I can't, and to know the difference between the two. Because yeah. I hear a lot of coaches say, you know, ultimately it just comes down to we have to focus on us. Yeah, and I think that's just, we're pretty, we're very consistent with that philosophy. Even with scouting reports, mm -hmm. we don't talk, we try not to talk too much about, other teams and what they're, you know, this kind of thing. And um, we really are trying to watch our own film. We're really trying to be like, hey, well, these are the things we need to do well, regardless of what the other team's doing. If we don't do these things well, it doesn't really matter anyway. And so that is just kind of our mantra is really focusing on what we do and trying to put that together consistently in practice day after day, uh, being ready to step it up and, and fight in a match. Um, because, you know, just your – that's what you can – can really work to control and that's all you can do you really mm -hmm. don't know what the other team is going to do uh you know you can pick up on tendencies and you can make it you know we have to be able to adjust within a match which is important but i think we have to have our ducks in a row and we have to really know what we're trying to do when we go out against an opponent or it's not going to matter anyway eight o'clock friday night against chattanooga four o'clock saturday afternoon against etsu both of those in alley gym and uh, as you said, fans are back. Tickets yeah. are available. Five bucks, FermanPaladins.com, where you can get them at the door. Has it been nice playing in front of fans yes. again? Yes, it, it really has. Uh, we just, it, you know, it was a bit of a struggle in the beginning just because we had to kind of wait a little bit and see how everything shook out. But, yeah, we are – we, we are glad to be back with fans. Uh, everywhere we go, everybody's very excited to have fans back. Yeah, it, it was an interesting dynamic for everybody uh, last year uh, and you know, going to, in, into basketball arenas, yeah. for instance, and then nobody there and, and Bob Ritchie talking about having to create your own energy. I, I yeah. suppose you had to do the same thing. Yeah, and you know, and we're we're a little more probably equipped to do that mm -hmm. because we're not playing in front of thousands, you know, match after match. Um, and I think, but I think also players, you know, once they're in there, yes, the crowd does help, mm -hmm. but you know, they're in there competing together and they love playing together. Um, you know, and it's just, but it is nice to have some, some energy out there and you can feed off it. Um, but at the end of the day, you have to be ready to do your thing on your own. Mm -hmm. And then that can just add, you don't want to be dependent on that. Yeah. But you got to have some students in there to heckle the other Heck team, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, for sure. <laughs> That's good stuff. Michelle, thank you. It's been fun catching up again. Thanks, Dan. That's Michelle Young. And this has been this week's edition of Inside Furman Athletics. Once again, Volleyball team at home this weekend, uh, Friday night against Chattanooga and Saturday afternoon uh, against ETSU. Tickets available at FermanPaladins.com or uh, at the gate for just 5 bucks. So if you get a chance on campus, come out and see this volleyball team play. We will be back again next week with another edition of Inside Furman Athletics. Until then, for Michelle Young, I'm Dan Scott saying God bless you. So long, everybody. <laughs>